Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning Today's class is about ideology. Many a time we talk about what is your ideology or we also talk about what is your ideological position. In films also uh, we feel that often and not just often but always a filmmaker takes an ideological position that may be explicitly or implicitly stated in the film. A film we must remember is a sum total of the makers attitudes, beliefs, social and cultural position. Ideology is visible or invisible and deeply embedded, so deeply embedded that it appears extremely natural. You see some filmmakers such as Sham Benegal, they, they, they take a strong position, Govind Nehlani, um, he takes a strong position against the oppressed class, for example, in his film Akrosh, okay, uh, Sham Benegal too, he has made a series of uh, films set in the, um, in rural India such as Ankur and Nishant and uh, uh, Susuman, Samar and uh, which, uh, where he talks about the exploitation and oppression of the, uh, the rural poor. Okay. Also watch his manthan, okay. these are the films that we will be talking about when we talk about the parallel cinema. So, I thought this is a good time to give you some introduction to what is ideology. Now, uh, so filmmakers can uh, either take a very strong ideological stand or uh, ideology may just be embedded within their films and it appears very natural. Uh, not much attention is drawn, there is not uh, much discussion of the dialectics, but at the same time we see that the filmmaker is taking a very strong position on something and that is what the lecture is all about, today's class is all about. Before we move on, let us watch this scene from Charlie Chaplin's 1936 Modern Times. Welcome back. I hope you like the scene and I hope you understood the ideology of the scene. What is it? Chaplin is actually talking about the assembly line production of those times, the Fordism of that period and the exploitation of the small man, the growth of capitalism as well as the exploitation, the victimization of the smaller person, although it is stated uh, in a very humorous way, in a very comic way. So, uh, perhaps uh, uh, he is not breaking into uh, big protests about capitalism, against capitalism, still it is an ideological movie that filmmaker does take a very strong ideological position here. An ideology can be defined as a systematic body of ideas, attitudes, values and perceptions. At the same time, it is also the collective views, attitudes, positions and dogmas of a societal group. Ideology can be seen or unseen on screen, it can be conscious or sometimes filmmakers project their views on screen in a very unconscious way. We have to also understand that ideology is also shaped by time and space. We are all creatures of the times we live in, the places we are born and raised and very often ideologies uh, represent the times and places where we come from, where we live in. One of the earliest films that we talk about when we discuss ideology is 1934 film. It was called Triumph of the Will, it is a German film directed by a woman filmmaker Leni Riefenstahl, which is a, a propaganda film for Hitler and it propagates his ideologies. It is a, an ideology here is very conscious and visible. 
However, earlier in Hollywood, the great D. W. Griffiths, he made a film called Birth of a Nation in 1915. This is a film which is set during the American Civil War and critics have found the ideology as uh, being outrageously racist. All the evil people in this film are black and the good people are white. The film also uh, makes a case for the dreaded and racist Ku Klux Klan. The film was uh, historically quite accurate. It was a blockbuster with realistic depiction of historical incidents such as assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Sherman's march through Georgia, you know these great uh, episodes of uh, the civil war. But uh, still uh, it was the kind of a movie which uh, evoked extreme response or responses from the critics. In order to atone for the sin for the birth of a nation, later on D. W. Griffiths made a film called Intolerance, okay, which is about the intolerance that prevailed in American society and he made a case for equality among all. Um, when you talk about ideology and social justice, then uh, the name Karl Marx cannot be too far behind. Now, um, according to the Marxist school, any economic system seeks to per perpetuate itself and power holders seek to make us share their ways of thinking, including the idea that it is fitting that they be in control. It is in our, uh, it is to our advantage and it is for our own good that the powers that be remain in control. The Marxist school of thought also talks about uh, two concepts, base and super, superstructure. At the base, you have the means of production, the workers and at superstructure, you have institutions such as family, education, mass media, religion, politics, judiciary, etcetera. So, workers at the bottom and then there are forces that, they, that control the workers and means of production. We will be talking about this later on. Another uh, key thinker of this period is Antonio Gramsci, who gives us the concept of hegemony. Hegemony for Gramsci is the winning of consent of the people, uh, just like uh, how according to Marx, we are conditioned to believe that the powers to be are there and they exist for our own good. So, in the same way, hegemony describes the winning of consent of the common person. Um, the idea is that uh, uh, those at the top, they support dominant ideology and they so condition those at the bottom that they willingly or unwillingly, most of the time willingly support the dominant ideology. Within the western world, the dominant ideology comprises white, middle class, heterosexual, male. So, this is important. You can always apply these constructs to our situations as well. According to Gramsci, the dominant groups govern and the subordinates are made to see that it is a general interest to collude with that construct. This consensus happens not by coercion, but from a desire to belong to a socio-political cultural system. People do not want to be left out, they do not want to be seen as misfits, so therefore they join and express support. So therefore, the common person expresses consensus with the hegemonic values of the dominant group. And what are these dominant ideologies? Belief in set family values and structures, heterosexuality, social, upward social mobility. You see, counterculture was against all these things. I keep talking about the ideology of five easy pieces starring uh, Jack Nicholson and uh, directed by Bob Raffelson, which is uh, like a major document of counterculture movement and where the hero decries family values, constructs of um, upward social mobility and the belief in the great American dream. Okay. 
the cinema reveals these values the majority of cinema the dominant cinema values and or so, sort of reveals the values of uh, preserving family values and structures social harmony mobility and all these constructs are natural and desirable and unquestionable now there is another uh, theory that is the frankfurt school of german marxists uh, particularly as represented by the works of theodor adorno who attempted to develop an understanding of the dehumanizing institutions and the processes of a capitalistic society hockenheimer's critical theory is uh, a study of capitalist society moving towards a new level of ideological sophistication he suggests that culture has replaced religion as the new opium of the masses in framing a certain order of conformism so what we see in popular culture such as cinema and music you know that has become an opium of the masses and it's that ideology that is propagated through these means that has become the uh, uh, the way we should live the desirable way of life the frankfurt school was dismissive of mass entertainment considering uh, it as depoliticizing the general public because of industrialization films books and music are easy to reproduce and this according to the frankfurt school has changed culture into merely yet another commodity so these are the major names the frankfurters adorno and hockenheimer we have been talking about leni riefenstahl and her propagandist film triumph of will d w griffiths who made <coughs> birth of a nation then we have also talked about gramsci and another important uh, theorist is althusser cinema talks and cinema has genres we have already done uh, a considerable amount of genre study we will be doing some more genres also soon so i am talking about genres and how ideology is reflected in film cinematic genres genres follow a classic narrative they support a closure and a resolution and they provide simple answers to very complex is issues for example we have already seen how charlie chaplin's modern times satirizes the assembly line production of that period where workers have become a part of the machines around them at the same time we have don siegel's dirty harry 1971 film starring uh, Uh, Clint Eastwood where Harry Callaghan embodies fierce individualism and right to violence so taking the right wing ideology to extreme it bears the hallmark of the 1970s attitude towards violence gender and race Tony Scott's Top Gun 1986 movie starring Tom Cruise many of us may not regard it as a a uh, great ideological vehicle but it is it positions the spectators culturally as it sets an agenda and provides solution to the problems and also plays on binary oppositions maverick versus other pilots maverick as played by tom cruise us versus soviet team players versus individuals and no prizes for guessing that our hero is a maverick and an individual and re he in his character the film reaffirms the myth of the dominant male now i have been talking about louis althusser uh in his book lenin and philosophy he says that art does have a quite particular and specific relationship with ideology what art makes us see and therefore gives to us in the form of seeing perceiving and feeling is the ideology from which it is born to in which it bases from which it detaches itself as art and to which it alludes he gives us two terms isa that is ideological state apparatuses and rsa the repressive state apparatuses isa that is the ideological state apparatuses 
church, family, education, legal system, media. This body or these bodies persuade us to be believe or behave in a particular manner. Our essay, it comprises the government, the government agencies, police, courts, prison, armed forces, these are repressive state apparatuses. If you do not subscribe to ISA, then RSA comes into picture, that is the idea. There is another great theorist, Jean Baudrillard, who defines ideology as a belief that science po points to something beyond themselves, that there is a depth beneath the surface. Uh, to know more about Baudrillard's theory of ideology, you should read his The Mirror of Production and also Terry Gilton's Ideology and Introduction. Coming back to modern times and Charlie Chaplin, uh, he conveyed ideology under the garb of slapstick comedy. The film, uh, as we have already seen, satirizes the assembly line production, where Tramp is a factory worker and workers have also all, almost become like parts of machine around them. The film is an attack on poverty, unemployment, capitalism, exploitation of the workers. One of the greatest uh, filmmakers who was, uh, whose films portrayed strong ideologies was uh, the Italian filmmaker Pier Paolo Pasolini, who was a Marxist and a social nonconformist. He was an atheist also and he directed the, uh, his one of the greatest films, The Gospel According to Matthew in 1964, which reinforces the filmmaker's ideology that is a radical indi indictment of materialism and social discrimination. So, two schools of filmmaking, fiercely Marxist and you watch films such as uh, Dirty uh, Harry, that is Don Siegel's films, where Clint Eastwood, you know, uh, extreme, he goes to the extreme, other extreme, extremely right wing thinking and famous lines from Dirty Harry, go ahead, make my day. We know that here the hero embodies fierce individualism and Definitely, he is. We we know that uh, he is out to get uh, bad guys also, and we root for him because he, in his character, he embodies the dominant ideology. Watch these two clippings from Dirty Harry. Some of the films with extremely conscious ideology, I will be talking about Indian parallel cinema soon, but then let us talk about uh, um, cinema from the west and also Hollywood. So, Bicycle Thieves that we um, constantly keep talking about, Apocalypse Now, Wall Street, The Insider, Fahrenheit 9-11 and Inconvenient Truth, Children of Heaven, Turtles Can Fly. So, some of the greatest films that depict strong ideologies. Thank you very much. We will meet for our next class.